Thank you. Uh, Alfie's funnier, and he's a better speaker, so I just jumped up first. We didn't actually put the <laughs> coin, so I just, just want to get out ahead of him. He does this to me all the time. So, um, uh, Mayor Clark, councillors, ladies and gentlemen, uh, those watching at home, the thousands and thousands watching at home. Um, this is, uh, it's, it's really an honor. I appreciate this opportunity uh, from the CBRM. Um, you know, the, you don't get that many chances to be here in front of the, the CBRM Council Chamber and uh, such a historic place, important to all of us. Uh, there's been a few times I've been here uh, at this podium or, or in those chairs, and uh, they, they're, they all, they're always important and they always matter. So I do appreciate uh, this opportunity. Um, you know, the, the, uh, the chance to be here with Alfie, uh, we go back quite a ways, and uh, the fact that we, we're here representing our respective parties, uh, is a great thing, and uh, there's a little bit of jealousy in Halifax because the, the, the metro MLAs, the mainland MLAs, are a little bit envious of the relationship that we have as Cape Bretoners, and it always transcends party lines, and uh, when there's an issue of importance to Cape Breton, we work together. We've done that many times, and we'll continue to do so uh, regardless of the outcome on May 30th. So I'm happy to be here representing my party and the government, but uh, of course be here with MLA McLeod as well. Um, to the, the councillors, the people uh, that are here, the ma mayor, your staff, um, Cape Breton's a, a great place, and it's, it's certainly not dying. I know sometimes we think that uh, things are, are in crisis mode, and we have challenges, there's no doubt, uh, but it's a tremendous community. We all choose to be here and stay here and, and live here and work here and, and raise families here, and uh, it's, it's tremendous upside, and I think we're, we're in that direction, and that's going to be some of the things I talk about today, but um, we're, we're going in the right way, and I think that uh, the people in this room, those of us who are elected uh, of all stripes and of all levels, uh, have the opportunity to create real change and positive change, and, and I really think we're getting there. Um, with respect to the agenda and, and the items that you've identified, uh, I really... Uh, just kind of freestyle, and I took it upon myself just to talk about some of the issues. And I know that there's no Q&A, but I'd be happy to, to follow up at, a, at, the, at later on or, or uh, after today to, to talk about some of these things in detail. Uh, so uh, I just this is sort of my own work and my own thoughts on some of these things as it relates to my experience with you and the conversations we've had over the last uh, number of years. So the first one uh, that you've identified is the barriers to economic development. Um, I, I don't know exactly what that originated from, and again, that's some detail that you probably have a different perspective than I do, uh, but from my, from my own thoughts, um, we're well represented by the partnership, by Business Cape Breton, who I think are, are doing tremendous work and growing, um, by NSBI, the, the former economic development de department that was here. Um, they're all important roles, and they have functions that represent uh, their respective stakeholders and the people uh, that, that give them their mandate. But, but for us, I think that the, the economic development agents, again, are us. I think it's the elected uh, politicians of, of all three levels uh, that get together and, and find ideas and understand what's important to the island. Um, I, I like to think that there isn't an economic development or job creation opportunity out there uh, that I don't know about, that you don't know about, uh, that the MPs don't know about. Uh, this is what we do. Uh, so if there's a way from a government perspective, uh, from, from our own organizations to support uh, any entrepreneurs, any businesses, any industry looking to come to town, uh, then, then I think that uh, it's incumbent on all of us to play a role. So that's kind of where I've always led. and. and I like to be in the middle of things, uh, and, and that's my nature, but I think that we all do, and that's why we're here. We put our name on the ballot, and, and uh, we come and we support economic development. So I think that really what we've done uh, as a group collectively here in this room has is, is been about partnerships and I think breaking down those barriers. And I, I just do want to touch on a few. Uh, every time I walk in this room now, I think of back um, a couple years ago uh, when we had the very uh, important and critical discussions around rail. Um, make no mistake about it, Geneseo, Wyoming was ready to, to abandon that line uh, and, and pull up the tracks and liquidate them. And that was the reality. And again, uh, they were fair in, in their rationale behind that and why they would do that uh, because there was no business model here and there was nothing to support rail, not only the ongoing uh, operation of that line, but of course the, the massive capital that would be required to keep that line open. Um, but we had a different idea uh, here uh, as, as Cape Bretoners, as representatives again across all, it was some, a conversation that transcended party lines. And uh, it was this room that started that discussion. We had a very public conversation about how we would proceed. Uh, we did that through the establishment of a, of a rail advisory committee who came up with recommendations on how we would handle this. And at the end of the day, uh, we, we tabled legis legislation in the provincial legislature, uh, Bill 65, that would address the, the discontinuance and the abandonment and basically create an opportunity for us to protect that line by way of, of the economic development development options 
by way of if there was an advancement of abandonment, we would have the opportunity to, to purchase it. So would other private sector operators uh, before the abandonment took, took place. So again, uh, Alfie and his colleagues, the NDP, and of course our, the government side supported that unanimously, which is something that you don't see very often. Uh, and, and we did that uh, in the spirit of, of, of protecting an important piece of infrastructure here in Cape Breton. And three years later, uh, we now have a, 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 a company, Genesis Wyoming, who has really had a renewed look uh, at the rail line. Uh, they, they would have taken the tracks and now they're here to stay. Uh, we believe, I certainly believe. And uh, that's a result of our partnership and the fact that we've worked together on that. And uh, that's important. And when we, we know this uh, repeatedly, you've heard this many times through the, the, the port discussions, um, that we need rail. Uh, we need vibrant rail and, and that's why it's still there. That moves me to, to our second topic, which is that port development. Um, I firmly believe this was a decade in the making or more. Uh, I, I truly believe that we're there and, and we're getting there. Um, based on the discussions we've had here with all of you, with, with you, Mr. Mayor, with the private sector people who have stepped up to make this viable, for those who have believed in it uh, for a long time, um, they've convinced me at first. Uh, and I was a believer and I want to believe it because that would be uh, certainly a, an economic development uh, changing factor uh, for many years to come. Then I took a, a trip down to the United States. I went to three ports, New, Jer New York, New Jersey and Philadelphia. And representatives at each of those respective ports couldn't explain to me um, as enthusiastically enough about the, vet the importance of a container port option on the eastern seaboard and with respect to other places who are, who are hoping to do that, Sydney was number one without question. Um, so I came back from that trip believing even more and absolutely convinced and not only convinced, um, I wanted to play a role. So uh, for us, that, that's, that is the future. There's other things happening as well, but it's an important part of the, our future. And luckily and fortunate uh, from my perspective, there's a number of ways that we can help as a province. You've got the taxation piece development flexibility, of course, with the CBRM. We've got Nova Scotia lands, the harbor bottom. Uh, there's a number of ways in which we have a direct role moving forward. So uh, the fact that we're, we're in this together uh, and we're, we're looking to develop that is no small task. And I, I truly believe, as I stand here today, uh, this is a real option. And every day it gets more real uh, and, and a better opportunity for us. Uh, another important file that we worked on collectively was that of the second birth. Um, I, I can honestly tell you this isn't to, to boast or to, to make this about uh, a personal accomplishment, but this was the one particular investment that I absolutely had to convince and take to Halifax uh, to explain its importance. When the business case was, was identified, um, a lot of it was about um, what would happen if we lost capacity. And if we didn't have that second birth, what would happen for the future? And, you know, that's almost a defensive business case. It made sense to me, and I believed in it, and I supported it, but more so than that, I think the argument also, and the rationale also became, well, what's the benefit? What's the offense here? What's going to happen if we do build a second berth? And, and I absolutely believe that tourism is going to continue to, to explode here in Cape Breton. The CBRM, we all know that those who are councillors in Sydney, the surrounding areas, of course, Glace Bay, uh, that, that tourism, that cruise ship traffic is, is absolutely imperative. We need it. It's, it's essential for us. And uh, we're going to be a tourism mecca as, as we look to, to double the provincial tourism in the province. Um, this is a, a key investment. And not only will this bring thousands of cruise ship passengers for many years to come, the economic development piece that's going to be felt in the very near future is obviously going to be the construction. Anytime you're spending 20 plus million dollars, a lot of people are going to work. It doesn't matter what that project is. So when you look at the magnitude of that, uh, this is a winner. And I think that's something that we've all accomplished together. And it's, it's a great thing. The next one would be just in general would be the private sector support we've seen. It's, it's great for government to make investments and spend tax dollars to, to build infrastructure to create an environment. And, and, and that's always the goal of any government of any stripe. Um, but when you see the private sector either spend money and invest in concert or over and above what's been done by the, by the public uh, tax, tax dollars and people who make investments uh, on, the pro on the public's behalf, um, that's when real things are happening. When you look at the waterfront here with PEV, with CME, with some of the, the uh, McKeel and the, and the developments that happen there, 
of course, with Duncan Mine. Um, these are real investments. It's, they're real jobs. Again, it's hundreds of millions of dollars if you total them all up in terms of what has to be invested right here in our community. And it's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of jobs. And uh, that's really what matters. And that for us is, is what is going to be key. So uh, the partnerships and, and the things that come out of those investments are critical. And uh, that is certainly good news for us. And I believe there's going to be more. And, and all of those players, Ernie Thrasher, Chris Klein, uh, the representatives from these, these um, organizations, they've all said the same thing to me at one time or the other. As Cape Bretoners, you don't understand the potential you have as, as an economic development hub. And I think we're all starting to understand that now, and I, and I think that's a, a great thing, but we've got to do it together. I can't speak for previous relationships with governments of different levels, but I know that ours has been pretty good so far, and, and we have our battles and our disagreements. Uh, but at the end of the day, this is about Cape Breton and Cape Bretoners, and I think that we're getting there. And it's the private sector money coming in that really is an eye-opener for us, and I think we'll do more. Um, my final piece on the economic development side, uh, this isn't an announcement or a, or a, a, a ribbon cutting or anything of that nature, but um, I think I've had a conversation with basically everyone around this table, and certainly yourself, Mr. Mayor. I, I really do believe, and this is one of these pieces that I, I, we're going to pursue um, if we're given the opportunity, uh, is that of a, a waterfront campus for the NSCC. I've always believed in that. Uh, I know that the, every, everyone that I've spoken to about this uh, sees the merit. Uh, the construction would be tremendous, but the, the traffic and what the, the impact is uh, would be significant. So um, I, I think that that's something that we have to, we have to pursue, uh, and we will do that, and I think that's a good thing for us. Uh, I know I'm, I'm running short on time, Mr. Mayor. You've given me the three-minute signal, so I'll go really quick to get to the other topics. But... Um, very, very quickly. <laughs> yeah. Alfie's enjoying this for a change. Alfie would never tell me to take my time in the legislature. Alfie just gave um, you five more minutes. The, 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 uh, the CBRM charter, uh, again, uh, this is one that's not new to me. I, I fundamentally believe in it. I think that it makes perfect sense. Uh, I was with conversations between the mayor, the premier, and myself. Uh, it, it fits with flexibility, with the taxation with all those impacts that it has in terms of development, uh, it makes sense. We're, we're, the second large, we're the second city, the, the second largest urban center in, in, the, in the province, and it does make sense for us. Uh, and, and that ties into the other topics, though, and I think that the, the charter for CBRM for Sydney also impacts other issues of taxation, obviously. Um, the cap assessment program, the, the property cap, um, this is a discussion that we have to have. And I know that there's a, there's a perception built around it that some people will say it's, it's, it's a, it's a death knell for development to remove it. Others say the opposite. I know that you know, the argument for, for those who support it say that it, it's, it, it helps low income and protects low income people. That may be the case, and I'm sure it is, and there's an aspect of that. So we've got to consider that. On the other hand, though, uh, I know people who have, who have moved into neighborhoods and are paying exponentially more in taxes than their neighbors because they're capped. That doesn't make sense either. So. What we've done, and, and quickly, the, 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 the experience for me that really brings this home, you can engage the public, and if you do it the right way, uh, they'll listen and they'll understand. And, and I think we've done that with the, with the toll highway conversation. You put the information out there, you let Nova Scotians tell you what they think, and we could do that with this exact topic. Um, it's to put it out there, it's to work together. We've got to have a framework for consulting everybody in Nova Scotia, but we've got to do this in a nonpartisan fashion as well. So the other parties have committed in the past. Uh, we still commit to this, that we'd have to do it together as a bipartisan committee. No politics, let's just get this right. So that's where uh, we're at with the cap, um, but you have to have that full-scale consultation. And just finally, I'll close uh, very, very briefly, but um, the equalization conversation has been going on for a very long time here in the CBRM uh, with, with court challenges and, and processes and, and the reality that there's, there's a different mix of who's getting what. And I know that right now it's done that the, the Nova Scotia Power grant in lieu of taxes is disseminated and Cape Breton gets the biggest uh, piece of that, but that to me is irrelevant. Uh, this is a bigger discussion than just the Nova Scotia Power uh, grant that's, that's divvied up. There's one pie, and we've got to get access to that pie as Cape Bretoners, and other regions want to have the same fight. So when you talk about equalization and mandated costs, um, we've got to figure out what works the best. So do you, do you change the, the whole strategy of how you invest in, in major projects like the second birth and put a bigger piece into that as equalization? 
uh, and then and then have the, the municipalities deal with that themselves, or do you do it in collaboration like we are now with these investment funds and, and uh, ways we put money in the community? So um, I think the discussions are wide open, and uh, we're part of. We want to be partners here, all Cape Bretoners, not just one party. We want to do this for the island. So again, uh, thank you for this opportunity. I appreciate it, and uh, I look forward to speaking to you soon. Thanks. Thank you very much.